obviously with a program like this all right the first thing I would do if I was teaching this would be actually to demo this and I would get you to actually decompose the program and I do this with the children as well so I'm going to run this program and I'm going to play it and I'm going to talk it through and as I do that what I'd like you to do is in the chat box I'd like you to just you don't need any technical language but to, to say the things and the parts of this program that you think that we would need to make so here we go I'm going to hit the green flag button up at the top okay and can you I don't know whether you could hear but there was a pretty hideous noise if I go off of into the green area okay I don't know whether you can hear that but um, on my screen it's pretty hideous it's like a screech okay so just as you okay there we go no, you can't hear the sound that's great okay that's fine let take it from me if we go off of the green areas we get a horrible sort of screeching sound okay as we go so what type of things parts of this game do you think I would need to make if I was actually to to make this okay anybody typing in there? oh right I'm just gonna stop for a second so yes um, thank you Jenny yes the slug map that's fantastic left right forward back uh, angles brilliant uh, the pathway yes yeah that's fantastic okay so all we're doing there is decomposing that and what we're going to do is we're going to have a go at making this today or, or, or at least part of it okay we see how we get on by the way if you don't finish it in the time it's not the end of the world I'll show you where the planning is for it you can always finish it off yourself if you go onto my codeit.co.uk website okay you'll find that uh, under the scratch planning section okay slug trail is there and the planning's all there including the success criteria and all of the catch-up cards and things um, in terms of where i'd put this in the programming it's after my most basic little action programs that we do okay um, but before all of the really complex um, gaming stuff so it, it is a game but it's not as complex as some of the others okay right let's uh, go back and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go file and new, get up a nice blank copy of Scratch. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do, first of all, is um, the first thing we need to do is get rid of the cat. And we just hover our little mouse over the cat, right click, and delete the cat. You all do that for me now, if you're following. Brilliant. I'm assumed you've all done that and deleted your cat if you had one up there okay so the next stage we're going to do is we're actually going to paint uh, a new sprite here and sprites are the things that we actually program when we talk about where all of those things come up in a second so we're going to paint can you see the little star shape with a paintbrush on it we just click that and it brings up a nice little paint editor now if I'm doing this with a lower school I make this very very simple can you see up the top here this is a sort of representation of our sprite and the little blue line indicates that it's pointing rightwards which means that if we're going to draw this we must draw it with the head facing rightwards okay so that um, otherwise it'll look like it's going sideways or backwards all right something that I got wrong lots when I first started so I'm going to use the very simple ellipse tool okay I'm going to choose a color just going to left click and drag so I've got a very very basic little body and then we're just going to use the line tool maybe a different color this time can you see the little color chooser it's the bottom left of the color chooser and I'm going to just draw a couple of little lines for the the sort of slug antennae by the way if slugs don't really look like this please don't blame me uh, um, uh, my knowledge of slugs is a bit basic really and then I've just used the red brush very simple brush there okay just to make some red dots at the end of the slug antennae and then when you're happy with that click OK do you want to all go and do that and then tell me when you're ready in fact if you just type in ready when you're ready to go on 
in the in the chat box and that'll be brilliant thank you Lisa thank you Sarah Now, if I'm doing this with the children, I'd be I'd be just walking around and making sure they remembered what buttons that would be the paint new sprite. Okay, thanks, Ross. That's fantastic. Okay, that's brilliant. I think we've pretty much got everybody. Thank you very much. So we've got a little sprite up here. Can you see up the top here? We've got shrink sprite and grow the sprite. Sorry, Duncan. I should have waited for you. Um, so we're just going to shrink that sprite. So all you do with these, you get these little four little arrows. We go into the middle of the sprite and we click a few times just to make it a little bit smaller. When we're finished with that, okay, we just left click over on the side. Okay, and then that just gets rid of the arrow. By the way, if you make it too small, you can always go back and grow it. And the children are often a little bit fearful of getting it right or getting it wrong. And I say, one of the things I constantly say to them is, look, it's fine. You can adapt it. You can make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller as you need to later on. It's not a problem. Okay. What we're also going to do is we're just going to relabel it. Can you see up the top here it says Sprite 1? If we double click in here, it goes, it sort of highlights it in blue. And then if we just type in Slug 1, okay, click away from it and you'll see it's changed the name down the bottom there. OK, right. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, we've actually um, drawn the slug. We're actually going to have a tiny little block of code here. All right. And our aim is to actually get our slug to follow our mouse pointer. OK, now there's lots of different ways you can do this. But one of the ways I often like to do with younger children is I give them the blocks to do, but I don't tell them how to snap together. And then we encourage them. So I'm going to do the same thing for you. We're going to start. Can you see over on the left hand side here? We've got these blocks and we can drag them out into the scripts area. OK, and those will control that sprite. If there was another sprite here, then we'd have to put different blocks in that other sprite. OK, so here are the blocks that we're going to use. We're going to use a green flag. And actually, when green flag clicked, this is a starting block because it has this little sort of curved top. OK. And the green flag, by the way, is off over on the top right over here. And if you were my class, I'd be asking you to point to it. <laughs> That's another issue. OK. We're also going to use a forever loop. OK. Now, if this is the first time you've ever met a forever loop, it's not a bad thing to actually just go over with the children what a forever loop is. And I have some examples of forever loops on my website. OK, so I would just be going over to my um, CS planning page and clicking on my forever loops and just briefly talking about some of the forever loops. And here's a few. The moon orbiting the Earth. Now, of course, we know that sometime in the future, the sun will expand too much and et cetera, et cetera. But at the moment, the moon orbiting the Earth is definitely a sort of forever loop. The days of the week are a really good one. And if you're talking through this with the children, go through them one at a time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. <whistles> Back up again. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it gets this idea that it's a continual loop that's going on over and over again. The heartbeat. Heartbeat is another forever loop. So i would just be going through those briefly before I went back to the programming. So anything we put inside this forever loop will be repeated over and over again for the length of the program. So let's go and find those other blocks. Those two blocks are in control. The next two are in motion. So we're going to need a move. OK, and I'm actually going to just type in here and make it move one. OK, um, and we're also going to need a point towards block and if you're doing this with children you do need to actually point out that they need to this little black triangle brings up a menu and they need to actually select point towards the mouse pointer right i'll give you a few seconds to see if you can snap those together okay when you think you've got them right just click the green button and if you find that your slug follows your mouse around the screen and you will have to move your mouse around 
okay then you've got it right if it, if it doesn't do that then uh, re-pull the blocks apart and try another configuration right go for it and type in ready in the in the box 